studious with the uh, the old glasses on the end of the Niels ploy. It's always the uh, getting in the car with you. That's something you always would do. Which was worrying. The time you looked up over the steering wheel, your glasses were actually not anywhere near your eyes. <laughs> Got booster seat in the new car, mate. <laughs> James Bond, James Bond. Who's your money on? If Cole can play like he did in Paris, I'm going to go for the Kiwi. Surpass the 60 minute, sorry, 66 minute average match time. seeing that activity into the front of the court. Trademark first rally from Cole. Both players really do like to extend that first rally. It's all about the mind games for these two. Going in, this is, going, this is 72 minutes all day long. Yeah. And now this is like a real wow. new PJ, wow. the way you're diving in there. I like it. Unlike you, you usually just want to take middle ground. Oh, of course I do. Good start. Two love. making can keep his bid in check. He could uh, be a serious problem for Colt. Yeah. Well, two unforced errors three, from Colt love. in the first three rallies. Very uncharacteristic of him. Four, one. Very solid start here from Joel Makin. Certainly stalled out early on. It's been positive, aggressive. Two very different racket preparations coming into the back of the court. You've got Paul Cole, his kind of hand and his wrist is about the height of his shoulder, where in contrast, Joel Makin's a bit lower, probably down around about the hip height before he lifts the racket up. So, very interesting watching those two different techniques. higher racket preparation from Paul Cole, I just get the feeling he has a bit more opportunity to hit down on the length, create a bit of more, a bit more bite and a bit more of a dying fade into that back area. Making it, on the other hand, just will have to hit up a little bit more.
Yes, lad. Fall one. Well, that is absolutely glued Five, to the side wall. One. John Makin has come out in this first game. Just a nod Seven there, yeah, you see the nod of approval. Five, one. About as good of a start as I've seen from Joel Makin. Not that. Six, one. Two, six. Yeah, nice attack there from Colt. Very low, very balanced. Taking a little bit of time to settle down at the moment, Paul Cole. Just feel that he could maybe inject a bit of pace into his movement and his hitting. It's the, the more pedestrian pace, for me to say, is it's suiting Joel making. Yeah. I don't know why Three, seven. he's not been a bit more sp sp sprightlier. Sorry, we've just been um, brought some wonderful chockies. That's good work from Colt. A bit more bite on that backhand drop. Four, Took it in. Seven. A little bit more head speed. Down the angle. Still a three point cushion for making. There's two errors Five, now from Joel Makin. Just a bit of hesitation. First of all, on the backhand, then on the forehand drops. Here's your money on, PJ. I think we'll, we'll surprise the 72 minutes. Or well, 66 minutes for sure, but 72 minutes is my guess. Players review, make on a yes decision. Some different stands I'm seeing this week with the referees and the kind of the contact around the middle of the court. John Making can't swing here. If he was to swing, I feel he would have hit hit Paul Colt. 
I do actually agree with you there. He was nearly touching him in the head. Yeah. He didn't on the tape back there. He, he actually it on the looks shoulder. Like he hit him. Yeah. Yes, that decision upheld. Has I need to maybe pop into a rest meeting tomorrow. From the right. I'm, I'm all over the shop. That got dealt with. Six, seven. Didn't know much about this, Paul Cole. Came into the body, just got the hips out of the way and chopped it into that front left hand corner. Yeah, he took that well, it was awkward. He's a bit more urgency now about Cole. for me is a phase where John Makin still needs to stay positive. Not too fine of a margin when he goes in short, but can't just now revert to going deep because of those couple of errors. He's got to back himself and take those opportunities when they come. to make Kim. Goodness me, that was a delayed one. Stroke to make in. He did wait and quite a long time eight, there. I thought six. at one point he could have had a bit of limb to play that lengthy, lengthy testing rally. The back end of this first game. So first point on the board for a bit of time for making. Good aggressive tight hitting down this left hand vault. to up the tempo here, Paul Colt. In the match previously with Farag and Abulgar, Farag's ability to read the opponent and step up the court, taking the ball in the short line, was uh, very impressive to watch. Not quite seeing that with Colt, but he certainly stepped up from the position that he had initially at the beginning of the game. Footsie in the middle of the court. Oh, a bit of a 
Yes, lad. Oh. oh dear, oh dear. Probably would have took his knee off if he'd have hit that. Eight six. How's that not a stroke? That was. Uh, I'd say that was more of a stroke than the previous one that was given. Too heavy, it's tight, but it's heavy. Oh, Cole's done well there. Too heavy, he's got himself out of trouble here, Kel. There's good patterns of play from Joel making though. Rally players now just taking the pace off the ball, resetting themselves before the carnage begins. It's brilliant from making, shaping the body as though he's going to thump it straight. Cole yeah. had to cover the forehand drive. Last Nine, minute, six. just works the ball the into that deep left hand corner for the winner. Certainly getting stuck into the truffle shuffle there, but Paul Cole not looking round. A lot of players would have looked round. He does come on that middle when he needs to <laughs> Joel make it. It reminds me when they played at the black ball. The end of the in March of 2023. Making got the win over Cole there. Cole made a lot of kind of edgy errors at crucial times, which don't feel really necessarily happen in this one. See what happens if Makin takes the first, though. from Joel Makin. Bit more the upper hand for the most part. Sorry, PJ, a bit things. more racket face on that. The fact the way the ball faded twice before the sidewalk. The other attacks that were going in at the back end of that of this first game were quite heavy into the front corners for Makin. So that was encouraging for the Welshman. Four game balls. You've got to say he deserves this position. You're still sitting on that post, aren't you? I am. Just enjoy the squash, mate. Get a prediction out of you. Perfect cross oh, court. Actually, you did go in for the duration. You said 72 it, minutes. You did definitely say definitely surpass the 66. 72 would be my initial. But you never said a winner. No. Well, we know who's won the first game. Just under 20 minutes for Joel Makin to dispatch Paul Cole. Looking good for the Welshman. Terrific start from Joel Makin. Certainly set his stall out early on, got himself in front of Paul Cole. Nice and patient, hitting his targets. A lot of accurate hitting, especially down that backhand side of the court. Also taking those opportunities to go in short. You can definitely see the 
Revised front court game from John Makin. Suddenly paying dividends. He's got Paul Cole doing a lot of work. Crucial first game he felt he needed to take this if he's got any chance in this matchup. Slightly worrying times for Cole. Trailing by one game to love here. Well, it was that blistering start from Joel Makin. Gave him the upper hand and... 90-minute duration with these two is... Predictable on this court, even in the cool conditions. The ball is uh, rocketing around. It's probably looking the liveliest it's been all the last few days. Second round of the men's competition. I mean, it's an unbelievable draw, isn't it? When you think about some of these draws, PJ, you've got... Some extraordinarily really tough clashes going on. Time. Megan leads one game to Lowell. Lower. Of the racket from the tight drive from Colt. Oh, he's got the lucky bounce. Two, one. So a lot seems to be going in favour of Joel Making at the moment. He's going to have to keep his temperament in good order, Paul Colt. Which he will, obviously. But it will certainly be tested. Three one lead Three, for Joel Makin after taking that first. And Cole needs to respond here. Something needs to change because the, the style of play and the, the pattern of play at the moment is a bit of a tete -a tete through <laughs> the middle of the court. And up to the Kung Fu dancing. <laughs> it's, oof. That was, uh, was a couple of chops making, not even batting an eyelid. Could easily see him go through a brick. PJ, any, uh, any prediction that's coming back into your uh, confidence mode? Still doubting yourself. No, I'm not, I'd never doubt myself. I 
mean, unless, unless Paul Out. Cole changes things up here, I can see this possibly being a 3-1 victory for making. Unless he reverts to a plan B, because at the moment it's, it just seem, it seems a little bit too much of the same thing. Well, you do get quite a few people watching jo PJ and they give their opinions. I'm sure there's one particular individual we know that would be giving a big opinion. And that was down and out. So two points for making. And out five four. You think three will make him? That's what you're feeling. Yeah. Unless we see a response from Cole, which he has in his locker, but. Where's that locker? Interesting. Oh, that's poor. And out. Five, four. Yeah, that's not ideal for making. That was a real sitter for him and thrashed in the tin. Scream from Cole. Trying to get some moji. What would you put the error count to? Two in a row from making after such a period of time. What would that be down six. to? He's probably up to about six. No, I, but I why? just think it's a bit of a drop of, of concentration. It's a bit of a drop. Players now much more urgency with the movement, more aggression. First two steps off the tee, a bit more sprightly. Starting to soften off now. Lovely hold from making, just stopping the movement of Cole. Recovered well though, as you'd expect from the Kiwi. Never has a bad movement day, poor Cole.
few times that Joel Macon has switched play from the back left-hand corner Six. onto the forehand, and the width hasn't been good enough. Straight onto the racket of Paul Cole. Needs to be careful there. He's got to at least get Paul Cole reverting deeper into the back of the court, even exaggerating that width of touch just to get him off of the tee. Half an hour mark, mid-stage of the second. That's well played. He had an opportunity there, Joel Macon. Caught in two minds. Seven, Could have played the forehand Seven, drive down the right-hand right side of the court. Seven, but in the end, Cole just tidying up nicely. Seven, five. Starting to find a bit of a rhythm now. Well-deserved tail break. 31 minutes on the clock now. It's been very clean, very fair, as you'd expect between these two. Cross court from Macon. It's being cut off by Cole. Yeah, yeah it's just, a, just an error. Eight, Continued pressure from Cole now. Much improved second game. It's a slight racket contact. Yes, lad. Sorry, I can't hear you. It's a slight racket contact. Yes, lad. I am mid ball on the backhand. I've given you the explanation. Players review, make it on a yes, lad decision. This will be an interesting one, Joey. I mean, I'm, I'm just going back to those two rash errors from very easy positions when he was up in the mid stage of this second, and then he's just not found any headway at all. It's gone into him. A, yeah, he's hit him, sorry. He's hit him. He's hit him. It's a massive impact there. I mean, it's a stroke, surely. Well, I mean, you say it like that. I mean, I think it's a stroke, but this could be anything. A slight decision of Cal. Macon has no reviews remaining. Interesting A5 to know the ruling on that one, then. Well, you should know the ruling. Yeah, well, should, well it should be a stroke, because he's hit him with his... Well, it's, then you get the weird uh, explanation of whether the shot was affected or prevented. To me, that was a considerable kind of impact. It's heavy. It's very, very heavy. And he's setting Paul Cole up. He's not capitalising in, in those areas, Joel Makin. I don't know what's kind of happened to him from a mental point of view. But he's had good positions and he's just not... Cole pay and he's getting into this. Cole's still not finding that range we saw against Alif Harag. No lad. 
Oh dear, oh dear. Oh my dear, oh dear. The ball was behind. You're going, you're going to the player. It's the most standard lap you are overcomplicating it, Margaret. He agrees. It's standard. In contact, I'm not pushing, he's not blocking. If you agree to play, I have to turn all that. That's a poor decision. It's a standard let ball. And that well, I did. I heard Joel eight. Mace making. He speaks very quickly. He said, "I agree." I think, they, I think they've got a good point as well. I do think the referees are really trying to find things or see things that aren't really there. And yeah, but the most important thing is to see when the ball hits the top of the tin and when the ball bounces <laughs> twice. PJ. Yes, lad. Six, eight. clearance from Cole. That was clever from Cole. That was really clever. That was a bit better from him. You see he gets out of the way, sees the opportunity and then quickly in. And you were saying about that, PJ, about that movement, that little bit of zap just to attack with the movement. We haven't really seen that from Cole yet. Certainly liking the attempts of Joel making to take the ball in short. It wasn't so much the height that he's taking it in for me, it's just the pace. A lot of it's going in quite hard hit instead of maybe just taking a little bit of pace off of it so that ball stays a touch shorter. It's almost a, a bit of a hybrid, a cross between a kill and a drop. Like a crop. With a K. <laughs> I mean, he got away with that because it was so tight. And up, 7 10, game one. That's the difference with the cross court whip from Cole. Just takes it beyond the reach of the volley from his opponent. Now, well, he set it up with a tight length, Four, made another error. Joel making it's Paul Cole that manages to take the second, just under 40 minutes. Still not seeing those both players playing one at the same time, but third game should be a fascinating affair coming up shortly. Much improved Paul Cole in this second game. Needed to respond. Joel making pretty much having it all his own way in that first. A bit more activity into the front. A couple of unforced errors, though, from Joel Makin. He's levelled up here, one game apiece, 40 minutes on the clock, so we'll now start to get into the realms of the physical aspect that these two both bring to the game. Head nod there from Colt. One game more.
And the backhand volley dropped oh. there from John Makin. It was the right shot to play. Just think if he could just slow the swing speed down a little bit, just to work the ball into the front of the court. Looks as though he's really hitting it. Yeah. Yeah. What happens is there with with the ball is that with what they put on it to clean it in between games, it can really skid PJ. Kind of bizarre kickoff ball there, and Paul Cole starting nicely. Two love in this third game. Where was the skiddiest ball you ever played with? Skiddiest ball I played. tournaments in, in Europe once and uh, there was no air conditioning and the humidity was so high you couldn't actually hit the ball, you couldn't play a boast, you could attempt to boast and it would shoot straight back down the line. Good length hitting. That's how accurate it has to be from Joel Macon. And out. One, two. Big difference there, though, Joe. He's, he's, his first movement when he's on the tee is actually looking to cut the ball off and go forwards onto it. I've just seen on that forehand side, he falls off, he rolls off the ball quite a bit. Doesn't have that same intent to go forward and, and take time away from Colt. Did you see there the first step from Colt? to take it as early as he can. He's got a 
away with one there. But again, the cross court width from Joel Makin, it's not finding the side wall. It's cross court again, though, Joey. It's poor width. And out three all. Tries to switch there onto the backhand side, and he's paid the price. Yeah, I mean, I'd like to see a bit of that front wall being used, and you know, try and get a bit more feel, even if he's he's hitting to the back of the court, just a bit more variety and feel through the racket face on the front wall. You know, when you guide balls and cut balls a bit higher, change the pace, it can help you to kind of start feeling the ball on the string. That was better. Right on cue there, Joey. Perfect. Right. That's well explained. Thank you. You do know your stuff. And out. Four, three. Particularly on Mondays. Just see the feathering of the wrist there and the, the looseness of the fingers. You know, another aspect about that last one, PJ, was... He was actually stretched out. He was using his, his, his range to create a bit more distance between himself and Paul Cole. If we watch down this backhand wall, there's a real habit of Joel making. He likes to volley off the left leg and he bunches up quite a lot on the ball. So he doesn't actually stretch out and take it that bit early. He takes it quite late and alongside himself and it gives Paul Cole and other opponents plenty of time to come around on the shoulder and, and be there to read it if it's not going to be nice and short, rather than stretching out and actually creating a bit of distance between him and his opponent. He doesn't kind of come out of this, this area within his body and is on the backhand side, if, if that makes any sense. You know, he comes off the left leg and he takes it down and it's fine, but you do need to take balls out and in front, in front yeah. particularly when you can read it. You know, Paul Cole showed some great deception against Farag in Paris, but with here, it, you know, down this wall, it's pretty mainstream you know he's, 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 he's going straight if you get a tight ball like that why not get on the volley and stretch out he's just starting to get on top of John Martin here at Paul Cole oh beautiful A little yeah. bit of a gift there for Joel Makin. Paul Cole, though, he's really starting to put some work into Joel Makin's legs Five, halfway four. through this third game. You'd have to say that the scales have just tipped ever so slightly. Well, he's the heavier. In Cole's the two, favour. Isn't he? <laughs> he is. Joel Makin, a bit taller, thicker set. Both these boys could easily be uh, either playing for Wales or possibly the All Blacks in the rugby. Cole will probably be a scrum off. John Makin, what would you put him at, PJ? You're a big rugby fan. Massive rugby fan. Centre. 
Yeah, probably. Paul Cole is just starting to pull away. Rest assured, Joel Makin will continue to grind. goodness that's a stroke that has to be a stroke to make in if you look at the movement of Cole he's gone right into Joel Makin here and now five that is an unbelievable decision play on please where's he supposed to go play on please Mr Makin you can choose I can wipe my hand no no I do you have just recently did no please continue please uh I'll apply code of conduct Mr Makin for time wasting my goodness I'm definitely off to the ref's meeting tomorrow. Five all. What is that all about? And out six, five. I don't think he's going to get a massive amount of success here. Paul Cole, unfortunately for him, his shot, he was two-footed. It was a heavy, very heavy counter. It's quite strange from Cole. He's usually pretty tidy in the counter drop area, front left-hand corner. Well, while we're waiting for this uh, review, just heard on the side courts, Mazen Hisham has just taken the first game against Rodriguez after an epic 25-minute first game. So those two really going at it on the conventional court. Yeah, they're ex uh, extraordinary front walls on those courts. Very echoey. I don't know if you've ventured over there yet, PJ. You've probably been a bit too busy. He's done the lion's share of the work, goal-making. 
finds himself with a two-point cushion at 7-5. to width, just forcing Cole deeper into those back two corners. And now it's Makin's turn to start to control the middle of the court. And it's Cole that's doing a lot of work here in this rally. see a player ask for a ball change after the yes, end of this like third PJ what's your thoughts on that one seven five from the left no I think both players would be quite happy to continue with this ball the round of applause the appreciation from of the left, seven, five. just how physically demanding this game is down please Come on down, mate. <laughs> Tom Aiken just telling the referee to calm down. Has been a little bit trigger happy. These guys are going hammer and tongue out there. Continues. This time, just creeping up to the 60-minute mark. I have to say that the quality and the pace hasn't dropped off at all. Not like. It's a good decision. What was interesting about that one was what I was trying to explain a bit more on the backhand. I felt it a little bit heavier on this shot, but at least PJ making stretched out. Watch this, he stretches out there and takes it out in front. Yeah, I don't see that as a let ball, really. I'd like to see more of that. Ball. I'd like to see more of that on the backhand volley of making this position there. Yeah, it's well earned from Cole. That was a bit more proactive from him. Six, fizzing the ball into the front a bit more. Well earned stroke. It's 
got to hang tough here, John making it, as he will, but not give any cheap errors away to Paul Cole. He's got a, a slight cushion of two points at the moment. And I've got to give him a lot of credit because he's worked extremely hard over the last kind of four to five minutes to open that bit of a gap. So he, he doesn't want to give that away too easily. And there's another reward. He's having to push himself here, as he always does. Yeah, on that backhand volley again from making. He's really had to, he's had to earn this lead that he's got in the third game. Well, we're into 21 minutes now for this third game, the longest game so far with these two. Singular game. In this match. What's been so fascinating is you're just seeing both players go through these stages of physical purgatory. Really dropping off. But then coming back. Yeah. Paul Cole, for me, there has looked for the interference in making. If you just see the shift of the, of the body from Cole, possibly could have gone in front, but he's just lent an edge towards the old making there for me. You see, the body's just gone backwards. Well, the Golden Tiger serving for this third game. Hit second wind. It's a good touch from Cole. Not many players lift themselves out of trouble as well as Paul Colt. Possibly Farag. Unbelievable squash this is. Nice bit of hold from Cole, just a bit of a shimmy with the shoulders. his ability to review this is where he would have felt he needed another review you yeah, see this again Cole. it's a stroke decision to make it has been fuming. awarded fuming there Hello. 64 minutes 2-1 we're just going to have a look at this again obviously it's quite important He's backed off there. You see the reaction of Cole here, PJ. So loose, loose ball. So the stroke deemed the appropriate decision. No reviews left from Cole unless this goes in. Unbelievable third game between these two. Terrific squash. The momentum shifts back and forth between both parties. And I'm so impressed with Joel Makin in the mid stage of that third game because he had to push himself extremely deep into the reserves to open up that little bit of a gap and manage to hold on towards the very end. Strike decision. Paul Colt not happy at all. And he's trailing here by two games to one.
time. I can lay it two games to one. I can do serve. Love it. Making, again, making the point, the referee didn't say anything to the court maintenance. They use obviously a solvent to clean the white ball, which we haven't got a fresh one. It's still the same ball they used from the beginning, and they're just knocking it up, trying to get the kind of sheen off of it because it's very, very skiddy. PJ did say he didn't think so. so there is, you're underestimated. So many different ways. Only by you. Hello. No, actually. <laughs> actually? Really, actually. 2 1 lead for the Golden Tiger. He's and he's got, got a great start. And if he hits corners wow. like that, Love. this will become a very big court <laughs> for Kjell. Well, we've surpassed the 67 minute mark. To width again from Joel Makin. Paul Two. Cole looks back in anger. Love. Oasis, don't look back in anger. Yes, I know the song. That's why I said it. You're the only one who estimates me. Well, this is a dream start. This is a dream start. Dream. Two outright winners at the back, then the trickle boast. Let's put that in beautifully. Paul Cole not moving well to that one. Good length from Cole. Ten, two, three. Yes, lad. Two, three. Good accuracy again down the backhand side from Paul Cole. Slightly fortuitous bounce, possibly. But he's done well here. He's back at three all.
Well, no initial panic from Cole with the very positive initial start from making. He just hits the tin. The practice shot as well. Difficult to emphasize just how brutal that rally was. These players' and out movement four, at, four. after 72 minutes of play is just nothing shy of staggering. Good work here from Cole. He's getting some physicality back into the body of making. He's got the length yeah. again, it's brilliant. It's that area of the court, though, that gets some finite bounces, but it's worth playing for it there. Yeah. Kind of skidded off the wall. It's, I remember this from oh, last year, obviously. Oh. As I said, the, the nick, the join between the floor and the sidewall down that left-hand wall is a lot wider behind the service box. So oh, there's a lot more oh. of an open nick to try and hit for that cross court, which is definitely worth doing. <laughs> Squeezing him again. It's got him in a vice. He's squeezing the Kiwi. It's a great shot. There's the jut of the beard. Cushion and a 2 1 lead. Joel Makin. Yes, lad. Oh, oh my goodness. Wow. wow. Look at the elbow as he tries to lift his racket here. I'm not sure we'll get to see it again, but as he tries to prepare his racket, Joel Makin, straight into the body of Paul Cole. Tempo's gone up. Almost found the width again, Joel Makin. Massive rally. The difference between a two and a four-point cushion for the Welshman.
Nolan. Yeah, he stitched himself on his own right there. He banked, backs his movement in to make a big, uh, five, big position here, there, as you can see, and gets tangled and gets shut out. Irony, really. Heavy from Curl. That is a beautiful. Clever. Good pressure here from Makin. Yeah. And he's at the 10. I can't believe it. I cannot believe it. Six. Cole seven. was uh, dead and gone, PJ. That's huge. It is, isn't it? It's huge. Should have been a stroke earlier on. He's hit the 10 there. Have to regroup mentally very quickly, John Macon. Just let six, seven. That's a great shot. Oh, I'd like to see that again. very uncharacteristic of Paul Cole. And he was under pressure there, eight, very six, casual as I he know. tries to just roll this across the front of the tin. Yeah, nervous look back though from Cole out the court. Joel Makin is literally on the prowl. It's an opportunity. Improvement. We do it every oh, oh, we it's haven't seen this for a while. Ball. It's really not that complicated. The hot potato has been absolutely launched into the lap of the VR. Who's? It's not difficult. These guys have pretty much got everything back on the court. There's a bit of interference as he goes through. I mean, he's closer to a stroke than a no lay. Oh, that's why he's asking. Stands on this a little bit, Cole. It's heavy. Oh, it's, it's a stroke, isn't it? The more you see it. This angle here, you'll just yeah. see the bounce. This music's awful. It's got to be a stroke. Really struggling with this music. Stroke to make him. You need to have a word. You speak German. Nine, six from yeah, Natulish. Yeah, what, is that Nutella? What do you say? No, 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 you and your food. <laughs> dear, dear. Oh, you said Natulish. Nine, six, stroke for making. Three point cushion dive button. Opened up again. I have to say that the improved width uh, is making Paul Cole very anxious in this back left hand corner, especially. Well, there's there the fitted bounce. The bounce. It's that wide, wide nick. He's got to get a bit more accurate. He's trying to force the pace, make it. Loose. Yes, lad. Very, very loose. I thought I've seen no lets given. Nine, yeah, well, you've seen, we've seen everything today, PJ, and we've seen no lets given. Seen a lot today. So many things. He had room to play there. He for had me. a good position Ooh. to play as well. He had a very good position. It's fourth game. Neither player has a woo woo. Stuck on that post. Lifted well. It's 
got the length. Oh, I'd like to see that again. Oh. It's heavy. Oh, it's interesting movement, PJ. As he said, he said no let. He's not seen it. And out seven nine. Get a chance to see this bounce at the back. Oh, that's too far back, unfortunately, but that looked very close. And face yeah. seven nine. Seven nine. Can't quite finish this rally, Carl. It's loose. He's certainly hit. Oh, oh, my, my goodness, word. What I a can't chance. believe it. You cannot believe it, can you? That was reminiscent of and when they played at Black Ball from Carl. It was completely different to the relaxation that we saw in Paris. It was a dolly drop, really. Three match balls for Joel making. No let. No let. Oh my goodness. And out a ten match four. <laughs> I don't know what the breath sees sometimes. He's got that back. Oh, he's thrown the old hospital pass. You see, Hot Potato's back in the lap again. Thomas Porter is juggling it around his lap at the moment. He's got a bird all over the place. He'll take the safe ground here. Not well, what ball. he's done here is he's, he's done a massive step into him and then he's tried to make himself small there and then he puts his hands up. Now, that's not a great movement from Joel. The Hot Potato is still flying around the lap of Thomas Porter. He can't get rid of it. I see it's just a, it's a it's a basic let ball, isn't it? The line's behind. Wow. Stop to call. So making penalised for that movement. Nine ten. Slightly Nine desperate four. from the Golden Tiger. They didn't need to do that. He's been penalised, and Cole still coming back. Still a match ball though for making. What would you do in this position? Service, please. Well, you can't write it, can you, PJ? I was just about to say to you, you probably say to me, in this position, I'd have stayed on my feet. He's lost his footing and it's cost him there. There, slip, couldn't quite get round. Yeah, on the spot, on the spot, yeah, here. Just need to sort that, that sweat spot, obviously, the one that they're missing. There it is. Big puddle of water. I've actually missed the biggest part of the sweat there. Yeah, I know. So, back to... Tie break here, Cole saving match balls. Just felt Joel making got a little bit uh, too close to the finish line, lost his focus and concentration and was a bit, a little bit overzealous, a bit desperate, PJ, not taking time over his shots and really thinking about it. Easier said than done when the adrenaline's flying through you. Yeah, I agree, Joel. I just think if you look at how quickly those last three rallies have gone against Joel making. Off that left hand wall. Oh, 
Uh, it was like something out of Charlie Chaplin from making there. It was unbelievable. It's like being back in the outside, isn't it? On the weekend, it's stuck on the corniche down this left-hand wall. <laughs> Nowhere to go apart from driving up on the pavement. You can feel the tension. Oh, he's, oh that's a miss hit from Carl. It wasn't intentional. I wouldn't say this is the tidiest uh, last rally. Goodness me. Bit of rugby going on, PJ. Well, it's just absolute hack way. fest. That's oh, better. Yeah, that's a massive. Finally, rally. we got a, a we got a rally. shot. We got a shot, PJ, and it's making. That actually finds some feel out. out of somewhere. Possible break in the racket streak. Fourth making. match ball for Joel Macon. <laughs> Will he play this point a little bit more? With a bit more thought. Oh, oh he's whiffed it. Was there contact? Oh, no. Oh, there are. This, this, now this, this, uh, this hot potato is ginormous that's been thrown into Thomas Forter's lap. He's got no chance of pulling it out. The movement there is, I, I've, I said to you, is he going to be a bit more thoughtful on this match ball? And what he's done is completely and utterly give it the old... It's not just the truffle shuffle, that is the double. Why would you do that? You're not thinking clearly, and he already got penalised, and he's going to get another... another. Yeah, he's been penalised again, it's consistent. You can't Stop move like that. He can't move like that. Why did he do that, and PJ? Now, just had to send it. Panic, isn't it? It's just one of those kind of uh, head-off moments. But after doing it a couple of rallies previously and being penalised, another match ball saved. Four match balls have been saved now from Kjell. Previous meetings, only twice have gone the distance, these two. That's a great shot. No lad. That's a terrific shot from Joel making there. Opportunity number five. Lucky number five. Hand out, 12 10, <laughs> match four. The 12 10 match ball, did I just hear that right? I mean, and out 12 all. Oh, it was on his racket. It was a dreadful whip from Cole, and he just nailed it right in the top of the tin. Understandable there. Quickly. Luckily, Paul Cole's wearing his swimming hat. Understandable is a, a wry smile there from Joel Makin, but quite easy to slip off the Golden Tiger. The fact that water is coming out of him like a sprinkler system. Just get one of those uh, those feelings that I don't think this fourth game is ever going to end. PJ, we're up to 90 minutes now. Five match balls saved. Back to 12 all. Oh, 
Well, all. I mean, Paul Shorts, Paul, sorry, Paul Cole Shorts are getting longer and longer. <laughs> they get longer, they'll be down by his ankles. If he's able to take this into a fifth. Just been so much more calculated and patient when he's been in that kind of tired up situation and with the scoreboard. The he constructs the rallies a bit better and he doesn't panic and he doesn't rush. Match ball number six. He needs to continue to work this backhand corner, Joel Macon. Where is she? Oh, oh, he's going to chop. Yes, lad. Oh, oh, no way. Excuse me. 13-12, match four. Oh, my word. If we see that from the sky view, I reckon a replay would be useful. Here we go. Oh, oh my goodness. That is a... Oh, dear. <laughs> Can't play that. Chance. Ah! And finally gets it. So John Good Macon gets well. the win nice to between make these two. The to one. Sees off Paul Cole. 11, six, Much seven, needed 11, win from 11, the eight, Golden Tiger. 14, 12. It'll certainly be uh, off for a good shower. Well, that was. A pretty tough finale. He made it difficult for himself. Joel making with those forehand movements. Got penalised for it. Backfired on him. 93 minutes, holding off Cole to win in four games, three games to one. So we're going to be hearing from uh, from Michael very, very shortly. Over to you, Mikey. Uh, Thanks very much, Joey, and the commentary team up there. Um, they enjoyed it in the commentary box uh, and a real slugfest, as we expected here. A 93-minute duration, that match between you and Paul. Um, let's get your assessment of it. Great result for you in the end. Um, happy with, with how, the way things turned out? Yeah, I mean, the, there's a lot of things that are variables here, like the core conditions, they really encourage attack and squash, so it gave me no option here with a player like Paul and myself. We're going to you know, cancel each other out to an extent. And then you need to be, have a bit more bite on the ball and a bit more uh, aggression. So I was just trying to be fluid today and move on to the ball. And just, I, I'm working so hard. I, I, I want to do my squash justice. And first result in uh, Paris didn't quite go my way, but the level was there. So I came into this week confident, knew that if, if I was hitting my spots well, I could definitely win. Didn't want to go home at one stage. That fourth looked like it was just going to go on and on and on. And what was the difference for you? At the back end? or the Yeah, back end of the game. Yeah, back end of the, of the fourth. Yeah, I was still trying to be attacking. I, I clipped two top of the tins. I thought with the right shot. And... Uh, in those kind of things, I mean, I've done so many hours and hours and hours of hitting that you, ha you have to commit to it and you have to believe you're going to hit winners from those positions. So I, I was there and if it's on my record there, I have to take it on at this point in my career. So They were wondering if there was any danger of just sort of like that excitement of getting over the finish line. Yeah, I think you had five, maybe I think it was the sixth game ball in the end that, that won it for you. Um, but you seem to up your tempo there, so the, the longer rallies seem to phase out and you were just trying to get the job done as quick as possible. Is, is that something you were conscious of? Not really. It's, it's always tense in those matches. Paul's going to try and not make a mistake at those points. So, um, and I'm, I'm going to try not to either. But he glued, glued a kill on the back end, hit a perfect straight line on the forehand. So what are you going to do if it's there for me to hit? I've got to do it and I missed. So I, I can live with that as long as I'm playing the right way. As long as I'm not jumping in the air, hitting a cross goal neck that's not on. If I hit the 10 on the right shot, I'm, I can live with it. So. Good stuff. Go and rest up. We'll see you in round three. Let's hear it one more time for Joel Makin. Through to the next round. Much needed for Joel Makin. Great result for him here in Qatar. Became a bit of a slugfest in that fifth game. Took him six opportunities to convert the match ball against Paul Cole. Paul Cole just couldn't find that feel and variety that we saw in Paris against Ali Farag. I really did feel that was such an encouraging match for him. It wasn't a great day at the office, but Joel Makin certainly had the more consistent game between the two. It's a difficult environment to play in, as we keep saying. 
for the result coming for making nice way to finish on the back end well we got plenty more squash to come i can assure you of that and it's gohart taking on a new training partner from the usa olivia victor this is the second time they've met in the space of 10 days playing in paris previous to this they'll be up very shortly i'll be handing over to lisa and to nicole for that one